When we play golf, we always want the perfect lie. We want the ball to finish here, right in the middle of the fairway. But as we know as golfers, that doesn't always happen. And sometimes we find ourselves in very tricky situations. In this video, I'm gonna show you three problem scenarios and how you can escape them much easier. So the first scenario is deep rough and I'm in a real tricky situation here. Now the trick is we don't wanna hit weak shots out of the rough and we don't need to. Our main goal is to get club on ball. Try not to get too much grass trapped between the club head and the golf ball, if you can. Now, a couple of things that you just need to be able to be aware of is loft is your friend in the rough. So for example, I'm about 165 yards to the flag from here, which on a fairway lie, I'd probably be hitting seven iron. Where when I'm in the rough, seven iron just gets a little bit hard to hit because you've got less loft. So I've gone for eight iron. Now granted, I might hit a little bit short of the green, but I've got a better chance of getting it closer by having more loft. Next thing we've got to do is we've got to slightly change the setup and ever so slightly change the swing when we're hitting in the rough. First thing is making sure, again, we want ball, we want the club to hit the ball first. So just bring the ball position back slightly more than normal. Not in the center, just one position back. The next thing I'm gonna do is really hold on to the grip of the golf club. Typically in deep rough like this, if I hit the grass, it can snag around the neck and start pulling it left. Hold it nice and tight. And then the last thing, you just feel like you're picking up a little bit steeper. Get the feeling using your wrist hinge a fraction more so that you hammer down into the back of the ball. Ball position back, grip harder, and a little bit steeper to hammer down into the ball. And that way it'll come out beautifully. That's scenario number one. We are safely on the green. Next problem scenario you may find is sloping lies. Obviously golf courses are not flat. We've got four scenarios here. I'm gonna talk through them. First thing I'm gonna talk about is when you're on an upslope. Now it's important to know when you're on an upslope, you're gonna be adding loft to the club. So where for me now, I'd normally be hitting my pitching wedge from this distance. I'm actually gonna go with my nine iron. Because you're on a slight upslope, it, it's effectively launching the golf ball up in the air. Now, as a top tip for all slopes, try to adjust your body to the slope. Don't fight against it. When I'm on a slight upslope here, I don't want to be leaning into the slope. I want to lean with the slope. My feet, my knees, my hips are all parallel to the ground. The other thing I want to make sure I do when I'm on the slope, it's important to still use the legs. Make sure you turn from the bottom and swing and hit. That time the ball went way higher than my normal nine iron, but because I took more club, we're in a good spot. Now, what you need to know when the ball is on a downslope like this, you actually need more loft because the ball's gonna come out lower. So again, I'd normally hit my pitching wedge from here. I'm not, I'm gonna hit my gap wedge. So again, it's gonna squeeze out a little bit longer. Similar to the slope uphill, I'm adjusting my body to the slope. I'm leaning with this slope. And again, I'm gonna use my legs, but just expect the ball to come out lower. That's why I've got more loft for this shot. And it came out unbelievably lower. And that's what a slope does. A slope will affect your ball fly. Now the things you need to know about ball below your feet is the ball will have a tendency of curving or setting off slightly more to the right. That's because the loft of the golf club gets adjusted. As I go more down on this slope, the loft starts to aim to the right. Take that into consideration. So I'm gonna aim left of this flag. I'm gonna lower my body a little bit. I'm gonna make sure my legs are a little bit lower just to account for that slope. So me aiming a little bit left. We'll make those really nice adaptions. That's worked out nicely. And then the last one, I've actually come the other side of this slope. This time the ball's above my feet. This time, the way that the club is gonna be affected, the loft is gonna go more to the left. Take that into consideration. So when you've got a ball above your feet, aim slightly right of your target. I'm not gonna hit this one because I'm hitting the wrong way, but set wise, I'm gonna stay nice and tall, aim a little bit further to the right, and make sure again, I use my body to turn through. And because I would have aimed a little bit to the right, I'd have made those nice changes to make sure I hit it towards my target. That sloping lies in a nutshell makes a massive difference when you're out on the golf course.
Now our last scenario is one you definitely need to learn how to play. Now obviously when our ball ends up into a bunker, we hope it's going to sit up nice and lovely. A perfect lie. Because that's, okay, I can play that one. However, we know in golf that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the golf ball comes in from a great height and as it lands into the sand, it plugs. A fried egg. How do you play this one? There's a few things first off to note. It's not going to react like a normal bunker shot. The ball is going to have more top spin. It's not going to have as much back spin. So we've got to change our landing spot. I want to try and just get this just out of the bunker, if I'm honest with you. The next thing we're going to do is use our most lofty golf club. 60 degree lob wedge or something of that kind is really important. The next thing we're going to do is have confidence and hit behind the golf ball. I'm going to make sure this club digs down into the sand. I'm going to make sure this golf club at minimum reaches the bottom of the golf ball. That's going to give us the best chance. We're going to open the face. We're going to dig down and we're going to just land it out of the bunker. It's really important to know it's not going to spin. It's going to roll a long way. I'm going to get my feet shuffled in and I'm going to hit just behind the golf ball, but hit a lot more sand than normal with speed. That way the ball pops out and I would be absolutely delighted with that. Come in for a second, let me show you. I have taken the Grand Canyon worth of sand out of that bunker. The ball was there. Look how much more sand I've taken. In comparison, I'd probably normally take about that much sand in a bunker shot. More sand, hit down, hit confident, and you will get out of this other tricky lie. Guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed Hit like and subscribe. Make sure you play these shots much better when you're out on the course. And we'll see you next time.